I'm Mandy. And I'm Jessica. And this is The Coop. This is Coop Faves, where we share our favorite homeschooling resources and adventures. Today's fave is living history experiences. So this is where students are immersed in a time period to help them truly experience a moment in history. It's so fun. It's so fun. And it's kind of kind of open-ended because there's not like a product or or a place you can go specifically. Um, you have to do your own research. You kind of have to do your own yeah. research. But for those who haven't heard living history before, it's just a really thoughtfully planned out experience for students studying a specific period or event in history. So something like a Civil War reenactment mm-hmm. would basically be a living history experience. Mm-hmm. So that's one you probably pay for, you go, you learn about it on the spot and you can watch something that's a replica of what happened. I have second cousins who are Confederate soldiers oh, yes. in Mississippi. That's amazing. In reenactments. I want to go see it. And I actually got to, um, as a kid, I got to uh, be with them in their garb and hold their muskets and stuff. That's so awesome. Yeah. In the trenches, we went to the location. That's so cool. Yeah. So what makes a living history experience? Period dress. Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. There's something about dressing up that just makes, makes you... all the difference. <laughs> it really does. Um, setting transformation. Mm-hmm. So obviously, if you can go somewhere, you know, to trenches of an old battlefield, mm-hmm. you know, if you can go somewhere that can kind of create the scene, that helps a lot. Um, being addressed as persons from that time. So when we went on our mining field trip, mm-hmm. the kids were addressed as miners and they were they were sworn in as an uh, with an oath, you know, that they it's were so going cute. to come and not, you know, steal a claim or, you know, that all was this probably stuff. their first oath most most of them have done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it was just a really unique experience. They even were treated as though they were miners mm-hmm. coming here to pan for gold. Um, activities to reenact those of the time. So panning for gold, uh, making candles. Mm-hmm. I've made hand dipped candles at a mission before, oh, just like they would have 200 years ago. Um, making did you ever light? Works. Did you ever light those candles? No, because you couldn't stand them up. I know. <laughs> but it was really fun. Yeah, it was really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had to dip it in the wax, mm-hmm. then dip it in the cold water, mm-hmm. then go and stand in line and do it again. Yeah. <laughs> 500 times. Um, And then there was uh, making adobe bricks. Mm -hmm. So when I was in sixth grade, we did it at home and had to bring them in. And then we had a contest where we had to drop our bricks from a certain height and see whose lasted. That's so cool. So it was kind of figuring out what recipe of of brick was the best. Mm -hmm. And so that was really neat. Um, And um, this was another really fun one from my sixth grade was we did chariot races. So when we studied Greece, we did like ancient Greek games, Olympic games. And so chariot races was one. I have no idea what we use. I need to go find pictures. But we had to get into teams. And I don't know if it was our little clumps, our desk clumps, like the four people we sat with or what. But I remember there being chariot races and we totally did like shot put and discus and those kinds of things. I wonder if it's like a, a red wagon with... I don't think you hold I on to. I feel like we had to actually create something or maybe they oh. had supplies at school and we had to just figure it out within 30 like minutes. Like a float type of thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. So now I'm curious. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't, mm-hmm. for all these years, I remember it being really fun, but I never thought about the actual mechanics of how to recreate that for my own kids. So yeah. here I am, but you know, we'll figure it out. Um, so where to find living history experiences, museums, historical landmarks, historical venues so may not be a landmark but some mm-hmm. place that like I noticed when I was researching there's a lot of farms that offer some kind of living history experience um, uh, privately owned properties mm-hmm. um, so research is really going to be your best friend here um, search living history and then add your location so yeah. if you're on Google put in living history in San Diego and see what comes up um, I had a huge list of results even when I didn't put San Diego and all of them were California because the Google knows. And um, so like it was telling me all these really neat places to go check out. Um, Search for historical time period or event and add the term living history to it. Mm -hmm. So Civil War living history and see what comes up. Um, You might find that there's a museum that once a year offers something. Um, I just found that out actually for when I was looking into the San Pasqual battlefield, which is kind of in our backyard. And um, 
they have a museum and it's one of the only um, preserved battlefields in the Western United States. You know, mm. the Eastern United States has a lot of the oh, Civil War yeah. and Revolutionary War battlefields mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. are preserved, but not out here because there weren't that many. Yeah. But the Mexican-American War um, was a big one, and mm. this was a particularly big one. So it was really fascinating to find out that they actually got it named as a state landmark. Cool. Um, but the museum was shut down, unfortunately. And then by the time I was researching all this, I found out they only do an, a reenactment every December. Oh, wow. So I'm not sure when this is airing, this fave episode, but today as we film it, this is April, and I was doing my California study in the spring, and so by the time I was researching it, yeah. it was already gone. Yeah. So that's okay. If next December we do it, we do it. But that's the thing about the research is you, you don't even know what's around you. Mm-hmm. I didn't know this was as an experience we could even go see. So research will be your your friend here. And then you have to just create your own. Mm -hmm. When you can't find something that fits what you really want to do, create your own. This is where when you have a homeschool co-op, it's super helpful if you have a big family who is into fun stuff like that. I mean, basically it's just a theme day Mm -hmm. with a historical aspect to it. But you take that perspective of being in that time. Right. Right. So if you were to do like a little house on the prairie day, that exactly. would be really cool. And right. then you dress appropriately. Right. And you don't you use talk. electricity all day. Yeah. You have to do everything yeah. without electricity. You make, you dry your, you make fruit roll-ups. Right. Using your, your drying rack for your fruit and stuff. And, exactly. Yeah. So that, that would be a really great way to do it at home is figure out the handicrafts that you might do for mm-hmm. that and how you can incorporate everybody into that and get them on board. You know, oh, are fun. you going to sew your own dress that day? You yeah. know, like learn how to sew by hand Mm -hmm. yeah so there's a lot that you can do um and here's why it's a favorite it's fun yeah living it like what did your daughter say about the gold mine experience oh i don't remember was it her favorite oh i'm sure it was she was like this is my favorite okay yeah (laughs) sorry that's okay i will tell you what she said no she said it was one of her favorite experiences that she did with the coop oh it's her third favorite experience third favorite yeah. Of all time. All time. That's her third favorite experience of all time. Yeah. So quite possibly first of the coop. Oh, not definitely. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really fun. Sorry, I totally forgot. Yeah. No, it was significant <laughs> enough that why I you knew have it. to write these things down. Exactly. Well, now it's recorded forever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was such a, a fun, memorable experience mm-hmm. for it was. her. Yeah. And so the kids got to learn how to mine in different ways. They're and... digging for stuff. They're panning right. for stuff. Right. Then they're using buckets to pour right. water down something. They did mm-hmm. sluice boxes. They used a long tom. Like, they learned all these things they got to ride in a mining cart you know that was set up as though it was going to go through a mining you know tunnel and all that stuff and so it was just a really they got to churn butter yeah they got to churn butter and yeah it was just and they threw tomahawks well oh yeah they threw tomahawks but (laughs) but no they're going back to the churning butter yeah then they got to eat it on a cracker and they're like this is amazing butter right and they all took turns so they all helped create it so Mm -hmm. there's just something about that experience that's just you can't replicate that. And it's great to do it in a group. Right. Right. A book doesn't teach you that. Mm-mm. You know, there's, mm-hmm. yeah. And it, the group is really fun. With your friends is really fun because it's just even more immersive, mm-hmm. you know, in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, it's memorable. These are things that they're going to remember. Yeah. I mean, I've already said how much I loved my sixth grade year. And we did so much living history. You know, when totally. we were studying the ancients. I remember they set up an archaeology dig across the street from our Mm -hmm. school and we would have to go there and we'd have like paper where we'd mark off the quadrants we were digging in and and write down and they buried stuff for us to find. We could totally do that here. Exactly. Yeah. So those are easy things to replicate. My school just did it on site. It just cost a lot for sand, but I could dig up a bunch of dirt. Oh no, yeah. It was just dirt. Yeah. It was just dirt. So you just got to till it a little bit. Yeah. Get it up. Um, And then... I, th- I mean, so I remember each and every one. You know, we mm-hmm. did Egypt, we did Greece, we did Rome, we did all of those things. Well, when something's so cool, fun, it is yeah. memorable, right? And so I'm not sure what history facts I remember, but I remember I loved doing yeah, it. You know, yeah. and of course I remember some of the things, right? Yeah. But um, it was just a really neat experience, and some of them involved going. Like we went to the Museum of Man when they had the Egypt experience mm-hmm. still there, so we were all dressed up. Um, and we went to the museum together. Mm-hmm. Like, that was really cool yeah, for yeah. a public school sixth grade, yeah. you know. So being able to do that with our co-op is even cooler. Yeah. Um, and then 
It's a favorite because it reinforces the learning. So you can study it before, after, or during the event, and it just really helps solidify what they're doing because it's Mm hands-on, it's experiential, and it's fun. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the best ways to really get that long-term memory. And it just exposes them to what life was like in one small way. So when they learn history two years from now of that time period, or they circle back, right? they have that memory, they understand that. They can call it back. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Um, So here's just a couple of quick ideas for other living history experiences. Mm -hmm. We've already said gold mining. There's California and Rancho days. Mm. I remember I dressed as a Californio. I had this big colorful skirt and a white, like almost like a pleasant blouse. Mm. And we had to do um, like dances. And so we'd swish our skirts. It was just kind of like folklorico, like Spanish or Mexican folklorico dance. And so that was really neat. Um, Civil War reenactment, colonial days. That's a, a... living history experience I have planned for our co-op next year. Well, and in um, Washington, D.C., there's a lot of that. When you're walking down, um, I think it's Williamsburg, it's all set up like that. Like the whole road is living history. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it'll be disappointing when we're doing American history for my my own homeschool next year to not be on the East Coast for all these things. Well, someday. But someday. Yeah. Um, You know, but we have a local farm who does a colonial days experience. And so I'm excited to at least get that. Mm -hmm. Um, Greek Olympics, like I said, chariot races, track and field, you know, you can do some of those original events. Wild West experience. Mm -hmm. When you take the Grand Canyon train, when it's not winter or Christmas season, they, you get held up on the train by, Mm -hmm. um, these cowboys, you know, and they're trying to, yeah. So that's a really fun experience is Mm -hmm. to get to do that. Um, ghost towns, Oh yeah, we got to see the Tombstone OK Corral shootout exactly. at Tombstone, and that was something they've never, my kids have never experienced yeah. before. I mean, of course, we said beforehand, just so you know, no one's gonna die here. It's right. all, it's all just a big game of pretend. Yeah, exactly. And they loved it. It was really fun. Exactly. So ghost towns are really cool, especially for those of us out west. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if there's ghost towns in on the east coast. I, I don't know. They're still, they're still using them. But you, ha- yeah, but you have <laughs> colonial streets. In, yeah, you oh, have, in, in you the have, east coast, uh, so. yeah. There's things we don't know. Yeah, we but, don't even know. But we're excited about living history, so we'd love to hear your ideas. Thanks for listening. We love your support. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast, leave a rating and review to let us know how we're doing, and share our podcast with your friends who need a little community, humility, and joyful fun in homeschooling. <laughs>